All right, hi everybody. We're so excited hey. to see you. Um, for those of you who don't know us, um, my name is Miss Kelly, and these are my daughters, Kara and Camille, and we teach the Sunday morning class for first grade in the second session. So if you are in first grade, you probably recognize all of us and we're so excited. Um, and if you're in an older grade, you probably just have seen us around. So hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, this week, we're so excited to bring a story to you that hopefully all of us can get, can understand because it's definitely something that happens every single day, even today uh, for adults and kids. So this is gonna be a pretty exciting story. Um, first of all, I'm sure uh, that some of you have a teacher or somebody in your life who you have looked up to, um, maybe a coach or a teacher um, that has helped you to handle a hard situation. Um, one person who has done this in the Bible is Paul. He has helped um, Christians, he helped Christians, he helps us today by looking over his words in the Bible. So this is something that we look at all the time and, he, and this is going to be a story about him and some things that he did to kind of lead somebody else along the path of going the right way, which is what we're all trying to do every day. So our Bible verse for this week is, is in Galatians 2.20. So if you happen to have your Bible there with you, if you will look up Galatians 2, that's where we're going to be reading our story from today. And I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That is Galatians 2.20. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about where that's coming from and why that story was brought about. So um, first of all, we are going to come over here and I would like to, if you, if, I'm going to jump back in the middle here, if you have a piece of paper, um, go ahead and grab a few pieces. If you have about four, you can use front and back. Grab five if you can. That will be very helpful because we're going to do a few things that you're actually going to be writing down some things. And I'm going to ask you some questions that you can write down and we'll go through it together and we'll talk about some things. And some of them I think might be kind of funny because we had a good time actually planning it and we were laughing the whole time. So we'll see how it goes. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, if you will write, here, watch out, baby. If you will write up on a piece of paper, these four words, number one, your parents, number two, your friends, number three, church, and number four, school. And Kara and Camille and myself, we're going to ask some questions because I actually asked Kara and Camille today, how do you act differently when you are at with your parents or with your friends or at church or in school? And we all said we, we have acted a little bit differently in different situations. And that's kind of what has happened in this story with Peter and Paul. So, Kara, um, what are some things that you told me how you act around your parents? Okay, so around my parents, I act very kind and very <laughs> trying to be nice. And for friends, I act totally different than kind and nice. So so some of the things would be like, would you ever say bad things in front of your parents? No. No, you wouldn't. Um, do, you, do you always say the right things around your friends? I do not. Yes, no. you are in church, so that's probably a good idea that you, that you do in fact say the truth, even though I'm standing here. So how do you act when you're in church? In the church, I obviously act like a normal human being. <laughs> okay. I, I gotta act like just normal and and what what's the words that we used earlier? You said what? <laughs> holy. You try to be holy, which is which is true because a lot of us get into church and we act completely different than we are when we're out in town or when we're with other people. And then of course when you're at school, you have to do what? Act. Cool. Well, cool, and but if you're in class, how do you act? Well, obedient in a way. Right, so like, you obviously wouldn't say to your teachers the same thing that you're going to say to your friends or to your parents. Um, and that's kind of um, what, what we're going to talk about in this story 
are some of the things that we do around some people are not the same thing that we do around other people and that and we'll see that that's been going on for a really long time so it's not a complete surprise so actually Camille is going to be reading our story today so Camille if you want to come over and read our story and again this is in Galatians 2 so if you have your Bibles you can read along with us so go ahead Paul wrote to the Galatians about going to Jerusalem with Barnabas and Titus he went quietly to talk with the leaders James Peter and John when they heard he was sent to preach the gospel to Gentiles those who were not Jews, they welcomed Paul and Barnabas. They all agreed Paul should go and preach to the Gentiles. In Antioch, Antioch. Antioch, Paul heard that Peter often spoke to the Gentiles and ate meals with them, at least for a while. But when other believing Jews came to Antioch, Peter stopped spending time with the Gentiles or eating with them. Others saw what Peter did, then did and they too withdrew, withdrew from the Gentiles. Even Barnabas changed what he was doing. Paul knew this was not right. He was so disappointed with Peter and he scolded Peter in front of everyone. Sometimes you are comfortable with Gentiles, living like they do, and yet other times you expect them to change who they are and follow Jewish rules. Paul reminded Peter that no one is saved except by faith in Jesus. Paul told Peter that he did not have to worry about following old ways of doing things. Following rules does not save people. Faith in Jesus does. God offers new life in Christ to all believers. Based on the Galatians 2. All right, very good. Thank you. So in this story, what's happening is um, we have Paul and Peter. And Paul is basically coming in. He's the one who is out preaching. And, and back in the old days, um, obviously, people were being brought to Christ. And some people had been born Jewish. So, so these are things that you, know, you had come, come around during olden times. This is obviously not today. So what was happening was we were seeing Peter. He was going in, and he was basically saying, kind of like, eh, I don't really want to be hanging out with all, with all the Christians, just the Christians who are like me. And so this was something that was very difficult because Paul was sitting back going, whoa, 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 whoa. We are all together one body in Christ. So we all have to be together. We all have to share together. And when Christ is inside of you, we're different people. We're not the same people who we were when we were born in any particular way. So this is certainly something that, that happens today as we go different places, that's an example. You, know, you see other people, you know, we're trying to bring people to Christ and go, oh, not that person, he or she isn't like us. That's our job. We're out there trying to make everyone Christ-like. We're trying to make everyone, bring everyone to the Lord, bring salvation to everybody, hopefully, um, and of course, through Jesus. Um, the other part of this is nobody is born saved. We have to take Jesus into our lives. We have to accept his salvation and know that it's only because he died for us that we're saved. We can't go around doing the right thing all the time. Thank God, because I never do the right thing. So we have to say, you know, we have to go out and we have to try our hardest, but it's not going to be through our works. It's going to be through him. Praise the Lord. So what we're going to do real quick, we have a few verses here um, where we're going to talk a little about actually Kara. Some verses that we have in the, what do you think, kids? I say Bible because everybody knows that the Bible, I wish you were all here so you could say Bible. Um, but the Bible is going to tell us exactly the ways that we can do these things, the, the ways to make ourselves, to make it easier for us to be the same person with our parents as we are at school, as we are with our friends, and as we are with our friends who aren't saved yet. And sometimes that's really hard. Um, I know a lot of you are younger, but as you get older, you're gonna meet kids every day who are not saved. And it's our job not to sit there and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. you have to be the light to that person to make that person realize they want what you have. And one day they're gonna ask you, what do you have? What makes you so so happy all the time? So much joy, so much you know, so much positivity. And you can say, let, let me explain, let me explain. It's Jesus. And that's when you have the opportunity to share your story. So Kara's going to read some things, and Camille and I are going to hold up some pictures. This would be the part over here. We've written down the verses that Kara is going to be 
going over. And what I would like for you to do, you're gonna get, as I said, to grab a piece of paper. And as she goes over each of these, um, we're gonna read the verse from the Bible. And I would like for you to draw a real quick little picture of right and wrong. What, when we talk about this verse, what's right and what's wrong? So we can see um, these are these are your um, per, these are the verses that I want you to look over. And if you want to pause this, I'm guessing we can pause it. Cassidy, am I right? Okay, so we can pause it, and you can go and look these up. Um, get your paper, take a couple seconds, um, and then we're going to go over them because we already drew them just because we're trying to, to move along. So um, go ahead, Kara. Our first verse is Philippians two three. Go ahead. Do not do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others about yourselves. All right, so we drew two pictures, and I hope we can see those. We've got the right thing. We have a little, what, what's happening here, Camille? You have a little girl doing what? What's she doing? She's helping the boy by giving him what? By giving him fruit. By giving him some fruit, giving him some groceries. And then over here, we have the wrong thing. What's happening here, Kara? In here, it's people just like posting on Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media saying, I'm doing these great things. You should be very proud of me. I'm so, I'm so good. Right. And a lot of times, just go do a nice thing. You don't have to post it on Instagram. You don't have to post it on Facebook. You don't have to tell anybody. You should just be out there doing the right thing all the time. And it's hard to not be like, oh, look at what I'm doing. Um, but that's what that's definitely what you want to be doing and that of course is is the right thing All right, so Camille what's next Kara? What's next? We have Philippians 2 14 Do everything without grumbling or arguing Okay, so we have the right thing. What is the what is the girl doing? That's the right thing She's she's gonna wake up out of bed to go to church way to church at 8 o'clock in the morning and the wrong thing of course oh church again no it's eight o'clock in the morning not that i've ever seen that before but and i haven't seen it from myself because sometimes i'm like oh but we get up and we come because we know that jesus loves when we're here he loves us worshiping he wants us to come help and help out in the kids area and help and do all these things so that of course is the right thing all right kara number three we have philippians four six this one is kind of important for this pandemic especially do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Okay, so this is Philippians 4, 6. This is my mantra, and my children and my husband make fun of me every day. In fact, my own dad, who is 70 years old, started yelling at me on Sunday that I don't have a spirit of fear. And then he raised me with a sound mind, and he said, oh, I think you're going for the sound mind part. I said, yes. But this is definitely me 100% right now, but we have to know, we have to have faith, which is something that we talked about earlier, having faith instead of, instead of just going by our works, we have to be faithful, uh, faithful to God and know that God is faithful to us. So we have a little picture here. God's watching over me. I still have a mask on because I still try, I still, I'm still going to wear my mask. Out in town, this is me on a normal day. I can't leave the house. I'm looking at the computer. What am I gonna do? So I'm try I'm trying. It's really, really hard. But we have to not be anxious and we have to know that God is watching over us. He has our best interest at heart all the time. Sometimes it's hard. Okay, so our next Number one, four. Kara. Number four. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. All right, this is Colossians 3.12, and Camille and I have some pictures here. This is us at a food bank. How can I help? That is the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do. Oh, how did you end up in this position anyway? Can't you get a job? Can't you? Oh, oh. And we see that a lot. Why aren't you out working? Why are you so fearful? Bah? This is something that we have to be compassionate about. When you see the guy on the corner who is begging, you can't sit there and judge. And it is hard a lot of times, but we as Christians have to do the right thing and just say, hey, I'm here to help. I'm not here to judge. All right. So I think Kara, I actually skipped over one because I knew we might run. Oh, oh, no, we've got number five. So number five is what? 
Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Oh, Lord. I know I didn't skip this one. Okay, so we have the right thing to do. What's happening? So she's cleaned up her room. Yes, Mom, I cleaned my room. And then, of course, the wrong thing. What's happening? Playing video games with all the trash and Coke cans and everything. Yeah, Mom, I'm cleaning. And this is a hard one. It's a hard one for me, and I'm 46 years old. So I still get on the phone with my mom like, really? So it definitely does not get easier, but we have to try every day. You only get one set of parents, and so it is definitely something that you definitely want to respect your parents, and God, of course, wants us to respect our parents as well. All right, Kara, I think this one is number seven, so go ahead and read that. No, I know we're only on number six, but I skipped number six. What's seven? Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Okay, so this is something that is hard, kids, especially for you guys, because a lot of times you might try to get some of your friends to do the wrong thing. Um, and Or you might just go hang out, oh yeah, it's okay, it's no big worry. But it is definitely something that we have to constantly try to do the right thing and to help our our friends, especially those friends who are at church, um, sometimes younger Christians who are trying to become and do the right thing, kind of steer them on the right path, just like Paul was doing with Peter. So go ahead, what's she saying, Camille? First, this is the right thing to do. Best not to go to the party if you don't know any of the kids there. Exactly right. And then this one, she's like, yeah, girl, this, this is a church party. It's going to be okay. Yeah, everything's going to be great. Yeah, just tell your parents you're going to church. I have to tell my mom. So you have to definitely be really, really careful. Um, and of course, we, if we're trying to bring people to Christianity, we certainly don't want to sit there and, and you know, be saying bad words and doing bad things and then expecting everybody to sit back and go, oh, yeah, you know, this is, it, yeah, yeah, why aren't you doing this thing? So that is, it's hard, but we have to try um, and, of course, try a little bit harder because sometimes it's hard. All right, and last but not least, number eight, go ahead. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Okay, this is a this is a hard one for us because we say bad things all the time. We I will go home and I'm like, ooh, Kara, guess what I heard. So we have to try really, really hard, and adults have to try really, really hard because we're probably more guilty than the kids are for doing all these things. And we as people do that all the time. So, what is your say? What's the right thing to do? She that she sounded very good. Yes, and her voice was I I would just like to say, Camille always finds something to compliment people about, whereas me and Kara, not so nice. So we will say that, but you just have thank you God for giving us, and we have to ask forgiveness every day. And then this one says, Oh, did you see her? Hear her? It sounded like a cat. She was choking on a cat. So we have to constantly, constantly, as adults and as kids. Read these verses. Look over these things every single day. And hopefully we have a Paul in our life that is telling us, hey, check yourself. I have a mentor. Miss Dana Cassidy's mom sits with me sometimes on Sundays and starts telling me things. And Miss Denise, who a lot of you have, tell me things all the time. And I have to sit back and go, what would these women do? Because they are, they're my mentors. They help me. So this is all the time. So I am constantly looking for people to help me. I'm always looking for a Paul because I am the Peter. And you know, this is definitely something that we have to, we as a group, all have to look out for. Um, so that is, thank you for that. And if you guys, there's a couple other verses in here that you guys can look up and check on and look over those verses and draw a right and wrong picture. Come up with your own of things you do every day. Because of course your things and my things are completely different. So check those out. All right, so we're gonna real quick, because I know I'm probably at like 500 minutes here and you probably all tuned out, but let's just go over some quick review questions. What did Paul and the church leaders agree on? If you can remember in the story, Paul was going to go out and do what? Do you want me to answer? I'm sure. Okay. Preach to the Gentiles. That was Paul's assignment. He was going to go out and preach to the Gentiles. So how did Peter change when believing the Jews came from Jerusalem? What did he do? He, he quit doing what? He quit helping 
being with the Gentiles. Yes, he quit. He quit talking to them. He stopped speaking to them. He didn't want to eat with them. And then he started kind of bringing people over to not hang out with them either. And that's when Paul was like, whoa, we're, we're crossing a boundary here. No way. How did Peter's behavior affect other believers in Antioch? What did they do? I kind of just said it. They also went and followed him. So, so um, Barnabas and other people started following him as well. What did Paul do about Peter's behavior? What did he do? He see, listen, my little listen. He decided that we we are all one group. Yeah. We're all in we all believe in Jesus. Exactly right. So he went and he talked to them him. He went and talked to Paul. He was like, hey, this is how, or excuse me, talk to Pete, Paul talked to Peter. And he said, this is how um, it needs to be. So can people be saved by following the rules? No. No, they cannot. You have to have faith in Jesus. That's the only way to get it done. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, as Paul's were as Paul's words were tough to hear. But an important lesson to learn, just like when I'm corrected, or I'm sure when you're corrected, you're like, really, again? But we all have to hear it at some point. Paul's lesson to Peter and all of us was clear. We are justified and made right with God through faith alone in Jesus. Salvation is not based on outward signs or works. And Paul reminded Peter that Jewish birth did not bring salvation. It is only through Jesus' death and resurrection that we have been saved. With Christ, Paul stood crucified, dead to his old life. Paul summed up his lives, or excuse me, summed up his teaching when he explained that he lived for God because Christ lived in him. And that his faith in Christ was the only way to have salvation, which we all know and hopefully you know as well. And if any of this is confusing to you or how you can bring yourself and become saved, please go talk to your parents and your parents. They will know. They will help you through it. And we can definitely um, talk about that. And Or you can definitely give uh, the church a call and get some information on that too, which is awesome because there is nothing better in the world than knowing that you are with Christ and that he is your salvation every day, especially, especially right now um, during this time. So it's awesome. So if I could, um, if all of you will bow your heads and close your eyes with me, please, as we pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day, and again, we thank you that you are all here with us today listening to this message. Lord, help us to be like Paul. Help us to understand that it is, in fact, you and you alone that brings us salvation. It's not our works. It's not anything that we do, and Lord God, I myself am so thankful for that because I could not do this by myself. And Lord, we just ask that you watch over each and every one of us this week. Watch out for us. We pray for, of course, for our country and our community and this church, Lord, and everyone in it. And again, we just thank you for everything in our lives and all of the blessings and everything to you, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. 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 So thank you guys so much. We're so excited to bring this message to you today. And we hope that all of you are doing amazing. We're excited because we know that this is the last week of school for most of you, um, the official week. I know we've all been hanging out at home. So good luck to you guys and have a great start to your summer and I hope that we see you soon. Bye! Bye.